Hello YouTube. So to my right, you will see a brand new Articat Wildcat XT Trail. Uh, it's a 2020. I just picked it up in Quebec a couple weeks ago. And I'm really excited to uh, bring a future review to you on how that process is on purchasing a, a vehicle from Quebec and how you can save thousands of dollars in doing so. But today we're going to be talking about an accessory that I've installed on the Wildcat. And that is the Super ATV windshield. Now the Super ATV is one of the only windshields available here in Canada that has flip up design. Uh, the windshield is definitely not cheap. It's between $500 and $600 on various Canadian sites, plus tax and shipping. So it definitely is an investment. Now one of the reasons why I decided to purchase this specific windshield was one, availability, and two, the fact that the website specifically said that it does not block access to the front to the front hood in the question and answer portion on the super atv atv website this specific question was asked and super atv stated that it does not um it does not obstruct access to that uh to the hood and that simply is uh, not true and we're going to go over that now on first impressions the windshield itself is very well made it's uh, a high quality sheet of uh, polycarbonate with uh, something called optic xr which is uh, probably a solution applied to the uh, top piece of the polycarbonate to help it resist scratching uh, all the hardware that came with the super atv windshield uh, seems well made and rugged now here's where the review starts to go sideways now the, the the quality is there but the design is not how they would have allowed this uh design uh to to be sold is beyond me a lot of other manufacturers will have the windshield cut in to avoid uh blocking access to the hood and as you can see here the top of the hood is completely blocked by the windshield itself We'll go on to the inside here, take a closer look. You'll see here's the latches that keep the, the hood secured in place. So if you remove these latches, um, you cannot slide that hood out from under the windshield. Now you might say, hey, that's not big of a deal. That's not that big of a deal because they do have um, these knobs on the front for easy access to pull that front piece of polycarbonate off. But you have to look closer yet again. Now these knobs themselves um, are actually secured with uh, nylon threaded nuts. So you would need to have tools on the trail to be able to to be able to hold onto the back of the nut and then with your hands uh, release the uh, the top knob to get this uh, windshield off. Time consuming and really a pain for something that uh, that you're not going to want to be doing on uh, on the trail. Now there's a couple other design features I'm going to call them flaws that would not uh, have me recommend this machine now, or sorry, this windshield. Now, if it was if the hood axis was fine and the latching options. Um, were the only issue, I'd probably be on the fence. Now, I'm going to show you why that is right now. So the latch is hood closed. You pull down on the lever. And I'm going to try and get the right angle here to see how much flex is involved in locking this thing closed. Now, this concerns me, especially if you're using it in, in Canadian winters. This is plastic, and the way that that clunks into place and the way that that has to separate to allow that to happen makes me wonder whether or not there'll be long-term reliability issues with that latch. Uh, because as you know, cold weather, plastic becomes brittle and uh, it breaks. Now when you're releasing the latch, same thing. Pull it up, look how much flex is in that bottom windshield before it finally pops. Now, whether that's a long-term issue or not, I'm uh, 
I'm not going to find out because I'm not going to be keeping this thing. Uh, now let's pull it back in and go to the second position. Same thing, tons of flex before it snaps into place. And uh, it also seems like there will be a lot of flex in the system itself if you are going at a higher rate of speed. Now what I'm going to do is turn on the machine and show you another issue I found with uh, this specific design. Now what they probably should have done is had two of these latches on the windshield and a support brace below them so that uh, it would take some of the flex out. Now I'm going to turn on the machine. adjusted this about a dozen times to try and get it to sit absolutely correctly and what I realized was that the gap on either side is much greater than the gap in the the gap in the center and I've loosened off all the top connecting pieces so that there wasn't any upwards pressure on the arms and still you cannot get that plastic to sit snug on both sides of uh, of the windshield. This is somewhere where they should have made the design where these latches were on both sides so that you could lock them both into, into place. Now, um, you know, turn, oh, we'll take a closer look here too. You can see, you can see how much vibration is translating from the machine to that glass. And uh, I'm sure that will become annoying as you're uh, riding through the, uh, through the trails. Now one of the other things to note with this specific uh, windshield design is that uh, the way that the clamps work on the top roll bars, it will not permit you to use some of the roof options. So if you do decide to buy uh, the Super ATV windshield, you are going to want to make sure that the roof that you have uh, is compatible with the specific windshield. Uh, some of the other ones that are compatible with all the roof options will have both clamps um, on the on the side itself uh, something super important to note uh, with these windshields is make sure you do not remove the plastic covers before you're satisfied with this windshield because both the uh, both uh, the manufacturer uh, the website and the leaflet in the box explicitly say, states that once this plastic film is removed you're no longer able to return it. So that's why I still have this film on because this is definitely going back uh, to the manufacturer. Now, as far as assembly is concerned, um, it was fairly straightforward. You can do it, you can put it together with one person. Um, you may want a second person to help you align the top brackets, but it's definitely doable uh, with, uh, with one person. So, I have reached out to uh, Super ATV to share my uh, thoughts with them. Um, they do have a chat option on the website and the person on there was uh, fairly helpful. They were trying to determine whether or not I get sent the wrong windshield uh, and then they wanted to know what the order number was from the manufacturer from uh, to the Canadian distributor and all this other kind of nonsense which makes no sense at all. At the end of the day the question is do I have the right windshield for this machine? And the answer is based on the uh, product numbers, yes. Based on the photos on the website, yes. So why was this design uh, so poorly executed? I didn't really get a response uh, for that. Now I did leave a review on the website uh, stating my concerns over uh, how this windshield blocks access to the hood. As of today, that review has not been posted. Um, Super ATV did say that, or the representative on the chat did say that they would change uh, their information on the website to reflect the reality of this windshield. I'm not sure if that's happened yet either, 
but uh, you know this is something that's that's really annoying when you're paying for the top quality product uh, on the marketplace you would expect that uh, the design would be there with the quality and this is just one of those things where the quality is there and the design is not so um, I hope you uh, found this review uh, helpful and uh, just make sure when you're installing it on your next UTV that you don't remove that top plastic till you're totally satisfied with the fit and finish of the, the windshield itself. Thank you very much and uh, please subscribe.